Hello and welcome to AllThingsFulfilled.com, the end of the world in Bible prophecy according to Joel chapter 2. I'm William Bell. Joel's prophecy of destruction begins with the blowing of the trumpet in Zion. This is the familiar alarm of God when he brings destruction upon an offending nation. Trumpets were used to summon and direct a nation in battle, according to Numbers chapter 10, verses 1 through 8. And even Paul says, in reference to tongues, if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? This is the day of the Lord, as described in Joel chapter 2 and verse 1, which had drawn near. The day of the Lord is not only used as the eschatological day of judgment in the New Testament, but it is also used for the eschatological days of judgment in the Old Testament as well, and there were several of them. In each of them, God describes the fall of a nation. Here it is Jerusalem. The army which comes upon that nation is a fierce one. The day darkens as with thick clouds of darkness. The invading army burns like a bellowing inferno across the land. It descends upon the land as the Garden of Eden. It leaves behind a desolate wilderness. Nebuchadnezzar and the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, attack Jerusalem described as an invading army, a figure describing a reality well known by the prophet and the people. Locust invasions were of such numbers that the sky darkened, not allowing the people to see the sun. The noise of them struck terror in the inhabitants of the land. Their fields, farms, and all vegetation stripped away in a matter of hours. Joel describes the day of the Lord as an earthquake, with trembling heavens and the darkening of the sun, moon, and stars. God's voice is the familiar shout of a commander leading his army, according to Joel chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Next, we transition to Joel's Bible prophecy and also to eschatology in the New Testament. Now that Joel, as the other prophets, demonstrated the use of apocalyptic language in Bible prophecy in the Old Testament events, he makes a rather smooth transition in the text which lays the foundation for understanding Bible prophecy in the New Testament. After describing the contemporary destruction for Judah in the 6th century BC, Joel affirms, and it shall come to pass afterward. That's the key phrase in the text that demonstrates that he is now beginning to talk about events that were going to transpire in the future. With this graceful sweep of the prophetic pen, he transitions to a discussion of events that would occur within Israel's last days. He mentions the coming of the Holy Spirit to leave no doubt he is speaking of a future era to that described in verses 1 through 27. Joel's end of the world prophecy is the background of the day of the Lord prophecies in the New Testament. That also means that his remarks concerning the day of the Lord, the wonders in heaven and earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, depict the coming destruction upon the southern kingdom of Judah in the times of Christ and of his apostles. The prophet does not change the use of the language, but only the object and subject of its application. As before, he speaks of the darkening sun, the bloody moon, and the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. This is the foundation text for almost every New Testament passage that mentions the destruction of heaven and earth and the darkening of the sun, moon, and falling stars. See Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, and especially 2 Peter chapter 3. Thus, the transition to 2 Peter 3 should be normal and natural, given this background. Connecting the dots of Bible prophecy in this manner eliminates the massive confusion and helps us to accurately interpret the meaning of the Bible. Visit us at our website at www.allthingsfulfilled.com for more information on the end time as expressed in the fulfillment of prophecy at the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Also visit us at our blog at allthingsfulfilled.com forward slash blog. I'm William Bell. Have a very pleasant day.